Okay, this is the emergency response guide. You can get them updated, they come out with them. Um, this is a hard copy. Now, I, I got this for the sake of a video. This is uh, the good thing about being a firefighter is you can get a hold of these things. Now, that doesn't mean you can't get a hold of them. Uh, I would just look up ERG on your phone. There's an app for this, Emergency Response Guide. The reason I'm making a video is I saw, saw people online, Tim Pool and the rest of them, a lot of speculation, a lot of speculation, a lot of, oh, this and that, and, and these chemicals, and a lot of speculation, and no one is actually looking up what to do in these certain situations. So I, uh, there was one video, I can't remember who did it, but they were... Um, Asking why why the blowing sound? Why would there be dust? What are they trying to cover? What is going on with the nitric acid spill in Arizona? It's quite simple. What you need to do is answer these questions for yourself with easily available material. Okay, so I would look up. What I would do is go to the blue because the blue is going to look tell me I know where to go. I know these things. I know these things. So I would look up nitric acid. If it's on the highway or if it gets moved by the United States in one more form or another on by anywhere, it's going to be in this book. Um, so let's look at uh, nitric N. Let's go nitric, nitric acid. And I believe I saw a video and it was red fuming. It says red fuming right here. And it's in green. That tells me something. That tells me reactivity. We have a reactivity issue with water just right off the bat. I'm looking at that. That says keep water the fuck away from that thing. Um, so we have a guide number of 157 and an ID number of 2032. First, we're going to go to the guide. The guide being in orange. We're going to go to 157. I can't fucking read with shit. Luckily, these things are on my face. Okay. There we go. 157. There we go. 157. Oh, we got a two pager. Yep. There we go. 157. What it's going to show you is potential hazards. First off, first thing you're going to see is shit that means anything to you, your health, you know, your longevity upon this fucking earth. So this is. Inhalation, oh yeah, all that. Oh, it says reaction with water or moist air make release toxic, corrosive, or flammable gases. It touches your skin, it's gonna fuck you up. Reaction with water, generate heat. Oh yeah, so you don't want to see right off the bat. Fire explosion is gonna tell you the right, next thing. Non-combustible substance, itself does not burn. Oh, okay, but may decompose upon heating to produce corrosive and or toxic fumes. See? Um, and it tells you what it can produce. Let's see here. It tells you what it can produce. So if you're worried about that, uh, this is a vapors may accumulate. Oh, so it's a heavy. Uh, it's a heavy. It'll accumulate in low areas. Reacts with water some violently. Uh, contact with metals may evolve flammable hydrogen gas. Oh God. So that means uh, there's probably a grounding that you'll have to do. Containers may explode when heated or if contaminated with water. Whew, you want to see? You don't want to just throw fucking water on everything. Uh, public safety. Public safety. Right next. This is a call 911. You know, keep unauthorized personnel away. Oh, freedom of the press. No, keep your daffy fucking ass with your stupid poli sci fucking shit out of here. This is the situation. Fucking idiots. Uh, stay upwind, uphill, and or. Uh, upstream. Yep, because remember, it'll. it's already told you, it settles in low places. Ventilate closed places before entering. Yep, everything. Wear positive, so PPE, pro positive PPE. You're going to be wearing an SCBA, uh, wear chemical protective clothing that is specially recommended by the manufacturer when there is no risk of fire. Okay. Structural firefighters protective clothing provides thermal protection, but only limited chemical protection. Well, yeah. So you're going to want to fight this as a maximum distance, is what I'm guessing. It'll tell you emergency. Evacuation, it'll tell you. Um, and then this green for a spill. So this is what we're dealing with is a spill. Um, you'd look at the highlighted. So that would be the 20. That would be the other number. What was it? 
what are we, 157? 57, uh, 2032. So we go back to 2032, back in here, back in the green in the back. We say 2032. 20, 20. See, you can listen to everybody, all the pundits fucking speculate shit, but here's here's the facts. You're listen. I'm hazmat operations. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I love this shit. So I'll tell you right here, 2032, nitric acid, red fuming, 30 meters. So this is a first isolate in all directions for 30 meters. Um, and then uh, daytime and nighttime, because daytime and nighttime, there are different uh, chemicals react in different ways. Large spills, small spills. So for a large spill, even you only have to uh, isolate first in all directions, 500 feet, then protect person downwind at 0.2 miles and 0.3 miles at night. So. Uh, it's not going to travel a long way, and the reason being it's so heavy. But what you want to do is you want to take advantage of that heavy, and I have a guess on how you fight this. It's going to be dry material. Isn't it? Some foams will react with water, so don't even do that. Small fire, CO2. Yep, CO2, except for cyanides. Dry chemical, dry sand. Yep, alcohol-resistant foam. Perfect. Large fire. Water spray or alcohol-resistant foam. Really? If it can be done safely, move on damaged containers away from the area yeah sure avoid aiming straight or solid streams directly into the product holy shit i would be afraid to fight this at all this would be fucking fun dike runoff from fire control for later disposal yep yep you want to dike everything make sure you contain all of that fire involving tanks or car okay so that's what we're dealing fight fire for maximum distance yep or use unmanned uh master stream devices or monitor nozzles okay do not get water inside containers. Jeez, this would be such a tough fire. Cool containers with flooding quantities of water until wet after fire is out. But you do not want to get water in it. Oh, God. Withdrawal immediately. This would be a fun fire. Yeah, always stay away from tanks engulfed in fire. Jesus Christ. Eliminate all ignition sources. You want to do that? All equipment used must be grounded. Yep, I figured that one. Do not touch damaged containers to spill unless... Uh, yep, you don't want to do that. Stop leak if you can do it without a risk. A vapor suppressing foam may be used to pr reduce vapors. Do not get water inside containers in big freaking bold. Man, this would be a tough one to fight. Use water spray to reduce vapors or divert vapor cloud drift. You can do this by uh, directing water through something. You can, you can direct where the air goes, and sometimes that's what you're doing. Hold on one second. Ah, thanks for letting me do that. Those guys pay the bills, so, right. <laughs> So anyway, where were we? Oh, uh, yeah, spill or leak. Do not get inside. Oh yeah, we'll use water. Small spill. Small spill. Cover with dry earth, dry sand, or other non-combustible material followed with plastic sheet to minimize spreading or contact with rain. Okay. Okay. Use so, so this is a thing. Like when people are saying, "Why is there dust?" The 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 um, state has issued a warning of people driving through the area of dust clouds coming across. So we can guess what's happening. We can guess that they've identified it, and this is speculation. But it's an educated fucking speculation because this is what they're looking at. Do you understand? They're saying we're getting reports of dust blinding dust on the highway and uh it says right here to cover with dry earth dry sand so if there's a wind this is going to be happening you're going to be seeing that so this is probably what they're they've identified it as they've identified it as in the guide is a 157 is nitric acid it's real easy as the red fuming small spill they've covered it with dry sand um, or another non-combustible material in there um, use clean non-sparking tools to collect material and place it into loosely covered plastic containers for later disposal so they're covering it, and then they're going to come in with machinery and have to dig it all up and clean it all up. That's the facts of the, what's happening here. Uh, first aid. Now, um, this is really important to know as well. Say, like, you get caught in these things, like there's an accident on the highway or something like that. You do get caught in these clouds. It could happen. This could be an immediate and acute thing that just happened right in front of you. That's why it's kind of important for the average person to have an ERG on their phone. No look at it know how to use it can you fucking identify something and go as fast as i've done and figure out and get right down to it you sh you should be able to 
I mean, not because it's was my job and it's my certifications, it's my qualifications and fucking expertise. It's because this is not that difficult. <laughs> At least just this part of it, because it spells it out and it's made to be that way. We need it quick. We need it fast. We can't fuck around and ask permission. Oh, another customer. Ah, where were they? I really like my customers, man. These guys are they're fun. They're great. Let's get back to it. First aid. What was I saying? Yeah, this is why you need to know some more about this stuff. What if you get caught in one of these things, right? You have to know what to do immediately. Like, what is what is your role in this? Keeping yourself safe is number one. Number one, you. Okay, this is where you get to be selfish. Call nine one one emergency medical services. Yeah. Call nine one one immediately. Ensure that medical personnel are aware of the materials involved and take precaution to protect themselves. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be telling them, if possible, if it's safe for you, to remember what this is. It will have numbers. And that's what the ERG can help you with as well. In the very front of it, the very front of it, these white pages right in the front, this will tell you everything you need to know about identification, um, and, and what you're looking at. This can get fun. If you're a passenger in a car going down a highway or you're this and that, look through it and identify the stuff that's on the road with you. You're sharing these roads, you're sharing this infrastructure with these chemicals, with all of this stuff being moved around you. Why do you not take an interest in what it is? There you go, right there. Make a bingo game out of it. I don't care. It's You should probably know these things. Not like be a professional. You don't need to know what I know, but you should know you should know a little bit more than you do okay now you should know because uh, what if somebody uh, gets a what if somebody is exposed to this nitric acid uh, move victim to fresh air if it can be done safely you don't want to become another victim sitting right next to their dumbasses okay or you'd be the dumbass because you'd be the one putting themselves in there that person is just an accident Give artificial respiration if victim is not breathing. But in big bold down below it, you read, do not perform mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation if victim ingested or inhaled the substance. Ugh. Wash face and mouth before giving artificial respiration. Use a pocket mask equipped with a one-way valve or other respiratory medical device. You should have this in your vehicle. If you don't, ask yourself some serious questions about you and your state of preparedness, okay? You probably have backup food at home, you have backup water at home, you have backup guns at home. You get all the fucking guns and you love them, but you have not a single motherfucking way to resuscitate anyone in your family. You have not a single, like, alright? This is, ex like, to be the medic, to be the corpsman, to be that person is the most Im important role that you could perform, okay? For yourself, for those other people around you, you've made yourself valuable. Okay. Administer oxygen if breathing is difficult. Remove and isolate contaminated clothing and shoes. I know how to do that. There are ways professionally to do that, but in case of contact with substances, immediately flush eyes with running water for at least 20 minutes. In case of skin content with hydrofluoric acid, UN1790, they don't just give it to you, they give you the number. They give you everything so you can do more research. If calcium gluconate gel is available, rinse five minutes, then apply gel. Because you're going to keep it away from that. You're going to keep it away. Exposure, more exposure. Otherwise, continue rinsing with medical until medical treatment is available. For minor skin contact, avoid spreading material on unaffected skin. Keep victim calm and warm. Effects of exposure, inhalation, ingestion, or skin contact to substance may be delayed. So... It may not be even acute. This may uh, uh, come on later. How much later? I'm not really sure. It doesn't tell you that. And that's it. It goes on. Anyway. So that's just a quick rundown of nitric acid, red fuming, 157, uh, 2023, I'm sure it was. Uh, um, oh, another customer. I'll be right back. Yeah.
the wool coat. Yeah, it's too close to the uh, side. Hello, hello. Hi. It's okay, it's okay. You have all your ducks in the same room clacking together in a line. Beautifully. Thank you. Yes, ma'am.